you get close to the Holy Spirit, really close, you don't even have to wonder what the Ten Commandments are. Because He will be leading you in wisdom. Welcome everyone to Wisdom for Life. My name is Joshua Bagg and today we are getting into a really awesome series, Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And in this series, we will learn that you can go from a surface level relationship with the Holy Spirit and go much deeper and have a really intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit where He talks to you every day, where He teaches you things that you didn't know. And today, let's get into this. Let's learn how to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. So please enjoy this powerful message from Alan Bagg. Open your Bible at 2 Corinthians chapter 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We've already been studying this. We've had a look at it for two weeks already. And that is that we see the revelation revealed here once again. And as I said, you'll notice it in many scriptures as you read, is that God as three persons is revealed. Yeah, you see Jesus Christ, the Father, God is love, and the Holy Spirit. Wherever you see the Holy Spirit, you see power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the person. God the Father anointed Jesus Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. There the three are again. And with power. And with power. So the Holy Spirit is a person. And that's vitally important to know. I was reading a book by R.A. Torrey, The Person and Work of the Holy Spirit. And this quote, it was written in the 1940s, and this is so pertinent, and, and it's really a, a statement that mocked me in my study. I had this book very early in my Christian life, and I thank God that I could learn about the person of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, the person of the Holy Spirit. And this quote is written this way. It says, it is also of the highest importance from the practical standpoint that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is merely some mysterious and wonderful power which we in our weakness and ignorance are somehow to get hold of and use. Or He's a real person, infinitely holy, infinitely wise, infinitely mighty, and infinitely tender, who's to get a hold of us and use. Yeah, beautiful. See, a lot of people think of the Holy Spirit. They talk about the, the power, it. Did you receive it? No, it, he's not an it. How would you like if someone spoke to you about as an it? Come on. No, we, we, we want to show respect. It's, it's, it's not just the power. He is a person. And it's in the revelation of knowing him as a person that you experience all that God has for you. Why is that? Because remember, Jesus said in John chapter 5, He said in verse 19, Assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He sees the Father do. See, He says, me as Jesus, I can do nothing without the Father. And then He goes on to say, Whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. And so the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself done. He will show them greater works than these that they may marvel. Now Jesus said you and I would do the same works he did. And we would do greater works than he did. Isn't that what he said? So if we're going to do greater works, and the only way Jesus did the greater works is because he heard it from the father... Well, for us to see the greater works, we're going to also have to hear from the Father. Say that. In order for me to do greater works, I need to receive what the Father says. And so Jesus went on and said in John chapter 16, verse 5, I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me where you're going. 
But because I've said these things to you, sorrows filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. What's advantage mean? It's going to be better for you. It's better for you that I go away. Jesus comes down to verse 12. And he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, he, that's a person. Everybody say a person. Who person? He, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So, he will glorify me, for he'll take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said, he'll take of mine and declare it to you. And listen to what Jesus says. He says, the Holy Spirit will declare what's mine. Then he realizes, okay, maybe people misunderstand me. So he says immediately, what the Father has is mine. But the point is, in his mind, the fact that his Father has given it to him, it's just as much his right and privilege to have it. He doesn't have to keep apologizing for it or justifying it. But to clarify it, he teaches it. So the same way, the reason he declares what he declares is because he heard it from the Father, by having heard it from the Father, he embraced it as his own and acted as unity with God. So the same way you, as a son or daughter of God, hear God, he said, I'm going to send the same Holy Spirit. He's going to show you what to do. He's going to teach you the same way you can embrace it and fully expect if the Father wants it, it's mine. If the Father wants it, it's mine. Isn't that what children do? They say, come to my house. Really? When last did you pay the bill? No, we're fine with that because it is your house as much as it is the Father's house. So the same way, all the signs, wonders, miracles, it is your privilege to walk in them. Not just to receive them, to walk in them, to administer them into other people's lives. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16, all Scripture, how much? All. all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration of God. Well, how was the Scriptures written? Men put pen to paper. But how did they know what to write? Because obviously whatever you have in the book is God's will. That's what you're reading there. When you read the book, the Bible, all the books in there, when you read anything in there, you are reading what God wanted written there. The Father wanted it written. But now how did it get onto the paper? Someone had to pick up a pen and write it. So how did they know what to write? By inspiration of God. What's that? I need to change the question. Who is that? Because didn't Jesus say everything I know I got from the Father? Well, how did he receive it? By the presence of the Holy Spirit. So someone with the Holy Spirit heard. Now, how did they hear? Because it's the will of the Father. Jesus is the Word. But it's the Holy Spirit that breathed it within the hearts of the people to write it down. So the fact that we have the Word of God says the Holy Spirit has been in wor at work in order to get God's will from His mind to your heart. And so the Holy Spirit breathed the Scriptures into the heart of men and women. And as He did that, Scriptures given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for... Doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for? 
How much? Every good work. Every good work. How many you want to be complete? That you, there's nothing you have to go, I don't know. What are we going to do now? I don't know. No, you do know. Complete. Complete. Anything you need has already been given to you in that Bible that you have in your lap. Let me see. How many you got your Bible with you? Let me see. Hallelujah. So, everything God has given you in the Bible is to bring you to completion. And it's His will. Now notice, in order to get there, it talks about doctrine. That's what we study. That's what we know. But it also speaks about correction. Boom. You see what I'm saying? We like the yes, amen parts. But God's going to always bring correction. But you notice something about when He brings correction? It's always done in love. Always. Always done in love. So we need to do the same. I said we do the same. We don't use the Bible to bash people over the head. We don't use Scripture to be holier than thou, to try and prove our way. You don't have to prove God. You just take His Word and believe it. And then minister it in love. Everybody say minister in love. So the Word is there for instruction and correction. So that the Word of God brings instruction and correction. So that means I'm going to be making adjustments in my life. So let me ask this question. How many of us here have made it? We, we, we're there. We've been totally sorted out. There's no more issues in our lives whatsoever. I mean, we just, if you, if, if you had to speak to me or God, you wouldn't know the difference. If God wanted you, if he needed to take a break, he could use you to run the universe. Anybody totally complete in all the awareness and knowledge of God? Let me see anybody. Okay, no takers. So then by default, I need to flip that statement over. There is something that still needs to be corrected in our lives. So why do we get offended when it's brought up? Why are we trying to protect our right to be wrong? Don't let the enemy attempt you with that anymore. Not going to get offended. You're going to say, Lord, I do. I need correction. Please help me. That's why you're in my life. Be listening for the Holy Spirit. Walk intimately with Him. Be listening for every word that He speaks. He will guide you. It, most Christians, the majority of Christians, don't think of the Holy Spirit as an individual, as a person that can communicate with every day. They may be aware of His name or even aware, as I said, as a power, but He is your intimate friend. He'll tell you the truth before anybody else will. Listen to him. Be walking with him. Be sensitive. Say amen. amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Remember, Jesus said, you, you can't bear it now. But God <laughs> has revealed them to us. How? Through His Spirit. Now, how does the Holy Spirit do this? For He searches, the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. How many want to know the deep things of God? For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him, in other words, whatever you know, you know. That's why I don't like to, when I'm with a, with a great man of God, I don't try and show off how much art revelation I have. Because chances are what I know, he already knows. I'm not training this mature general in the faith. I'm not so arrogant to think I can impress him with my revelation. No, 
when I'm in the presence of someone who's walked the road long and hard and shown success that I want to learn from, I'm there to listen. Because what I know, I already know. So what's the point of me talking to them? I'm not learning anything. But if I want to listen, then I want to hear what someone else says. Say what I know, I already know. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Who knows the things of the Father? The Holy Spirit. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. Why? So that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. God. God wants you to know His will. God's desire is for you to know your future. His desire is for you to even know the deep things of God. So how's that going to be revealed? Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift your hand and say, God is revealing the deepest knowledge of His will to me by His Holy Spirit. And I receive you, Holy Spirit. I receive all your truth in Jesus' name. Verse 13, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, Jesus, when he taught, compared spiritual things with natural things. But the Holy Spirit will reveal spiritual things with spiritual truths. In other words, me as your pastor, I can only use my English language to communicate. I could use tongues, but then you would have to pray for interpretation. But even if we had someone interpreting the tongues, they'd still be going back to English. Now, when I teach you in English, it's to put you onto a track. But I am unable to reveal the deep things of God using my English language. I could in tongues. I'll speak in tongues, but then most people wouldn't know what I said. That's why it sounds like gibberish to a lot of people, because they're not aware of the Spirit. But that's not the purpose for me as your pastor. I'm not yet to reveal the deep things of God. I'm to let you know they're available. And introduce you to the person of the Holy Spirit who's already in you. That a lot of people didn't even know he was there. Or what his purpose was. Not just so that you have goosebumps and then one day get to heaven. No, he's there to reveal the deep mysteries. So just the same way you got up this morning. You got dressed, cleaned up. Shaved, makeup, hair, clothes, looked in the mirror, did whatever, and came all the way here to sit in a building to hear me speak to you using my limited English language so that you could learn something and be inspired, but much more than that, receive faith. Receive faith. And yet, in all this time, I have not yet revealed the deep thing. Now, who reveals the deep things to you? So then we need to take just as much time and effort to spend quality time with him. Why do we sit and listen to a pastor for 40 minutes and then give the Holy Spirit five? I'm here just to, it's, it's like if, if a train has just been built, you have to put it on the track. Okay, so we take all this effort to build the train, build the track, put the train on the track. You start it up and you go, jik, 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 jik. Well, that was fun. No, it has a journey to travel. And so we need to be spending more time with the Holy Spirit than we are with our pastor. More time with the Holy Spirit than we are with that big TV in our TV is not reading anything to you. Come on. 
It's spending time with the Holy Spirit. Intimate. Because he's got a lot to tell you. He's got a lot to tell you. Reveal the deep things of God. Everything you need to know to succeed, he wants to tell you. Everything you need to know to do for your career, whatever your purpose is, your vision, the, the God's destiny for you, all of that he wants to reveal to you. Remember Jesus said in John 14 verse 26, The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you how much? All things. All things. And he'll bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Not just going to church, saying I'm a Christian. How many of you believe you're a son or daughter of God? Say that. As a son or daughter of God, I am led by the Spirit of God. You know, you hear people saying, I want more of the Holy Spirit. I want more of you, God. God, please, I want more of you. When you got born again, the whole Holy Spirit moved into you. How much more of Him do you want? Did He come without His leg? Can you see how we can pray religiously and not realize it? Have you received the Holy Spirit when you're born again? So our prayer is not, I want more of you. We should rather be saying, Holy Spirit, how can you have more of me? Say that. Holy Spirit, how can you have more of me? See, he has an outstanding scripture. Galatians 5.16. Walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit, spirit against flesh. These are contrary to one another. I wish I could do the right thing. Yeah. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. In other words, if you get close to the Holy Spirit, really close, you don't even have to wonder what the Ten Commandments are. Because He will be leading you in wisdom. You receive something today? Let's give Jesus praise for his word. Every head bowed, every eye closed as Christians pray. Just before we leave today, we want to make sure that everybody here is in a right relationship with Jesus. Maybe as you've been listening to me, you think, you know what? I've been kind of sitting on the outside listening in. I don't know the Holy Spirit the way these people do. Uh, maybe you went to church all your life, but you never really experienced God in any way. It was more a religious act. Maybe you've been looking for the answers and you haven't found it yet. But today you have sensed the presence of God and you're saying, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. This is what I want. Maybe you recognize your life as being a life of sin. And a lot of people are afraid to come to God because they need to feel they need to fix their life up first. No, if we could fix our own lives up, we would have. No, we come to Him in our broken state. Why? Because He loves us and He calls us home. And He died on a cross to pay for your sin. And He paid for it because He loves you and He doesn't want that being a burden in your life. And He totally forgiven you already. All you have to do today is receive it. You say, how do I do that, Pastor Alan? The word says, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that is your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. There's that confession. I'm going to lead you in that confession. You need to hear this out of your own mouth. Say it. Dear Jesus, thank you. I know you died for me. You paid for my sin. And today I received that. I thank you for your forgiveness. And right now, I call you Lord, my Lord. And as I do, you're now my Savior. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And Holy Spirit, as you move in to dwell with me, 
I receive your life, the life of God. And I live for you. I'll follow you. I'll obey you. And I know one day I will leave this earth and stand before you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again, a child of God. Now, you've made a very important step. We've got something to help you now in that. It's something that's going to help build and encourage your faith, something to listen to, and something to read, some guidelines now that you are Christian. That's a free gift from us to you. Now, to get that to you, please go to our website, thebaycfc.org. Click on Contact Us. You'll see salvation there. It'll open a form. Please fill it in. And once we have your details, we'll make sure you get that gift as well. So welcome home. Welcome to the family. God bless you. Fathers, we go today. We rejoice knowing you never leave us nor forsake us. Your angels are given charge to ensure our safety. You said no evil befalls us. No plague comes near our dwelling. I believe each and every person travels safely to their destination. I call your family blessed. And Holy Spirit, we're so aware of your presence. We walk close with you and that you may demonstrate your life through us that others will see it and be drawn to know you and join us in lifting up your name, declaring Jesus is Lord. Love you, family. We'll see you later. If you would like to get hold of this entire message, please email our Allen Bag Ministries offices. When you email, please also mention the code WD. We will then send you the link for this entire MP3 message at no cost so that you can download it and enjoy everything that Alan Bag shared.